Hi, this is Jay Balakrishna. In this video, we are going to discuss the uses of uh, R. A R E R. This is one of the most uh, important uh, verbs in English language. And if we know how to use this, we can make around eight types of sentences. And if we learn these eight types of sentences, we can make use of them and we can improve our English language skills and fluency and spontaneity. This is called an auxiliary verb. If it is possible, you remember the name. Otherwise, you simply call it a technical word in English language. A friend of yours is going to help you in making some sentences. And it indicates present tense. You should use it only for present tense. You should not use it for past tense or future tense. Remember the point very carefully. It indicates only present tense. Fine. Now what about the subject? How many people can go with this? We. That is plural form. We. You. I can use it for singular as well as plural. You. They. Any plural noun. Let us say children. So in first person, we. In second person, you. In third person, they and any plural noun. So maximum these four people can go with are. And if you try to use it for anybody else other than these four people, mind you, it's going to be a grammar mistake. So we should be careful in remembering these two points that it indicates present tense and it can go with these four people. This is called grammar. Fine. Now, how does it help me in making sentences in English language? If you remember these two points, it's going to help you in making maximum eight types of sentences. And if you learn how to make these eight types of sentences, you can convey your feelings, your opinions, your ideas, your thoughts through these eight sentences. Let us see what those eight sentences are. Look at these sentences. This is the subject we and this is the verb are. We are soldiers. We are brave. We are fighting. We are at the border. We are there. We are to get the award. We are respected. We are being followed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. R is going to help you in making eight types of sentences. Let us read these eight sentences once. We are soldiers. We are brave. We are fighting. We are at the border. We are there. We are to get the award. We are respected. We are being followed. These are the eight types of sentences you can make with the verb called are. Do not bother to know whether it is an auxiliary verb or a main verb or X or Y or Z. That is the business of traditional teachers. The more you try to know about the terminology, the more you get confused and the more you lose the happiness of learning. Why should we bother whether it is an auxiliary verb or main verb? All that we need to know is how to use R in my English language correctly and how many types of sentences can I make with R. Look at these sentences. We are soldiers. We are employees. We are workers. We are players. 
we are parents this is called subject this is called verb call it a verb that's enough and parents players workers employees soldiers they come under other words category and they are called nouns i repeat we are soldiers we are employees we are workers we are players we are parents and this type of sentences indicate identity identity of a person soldiers this is the identity of these people employees this is the identity of these people workers this is the identity of these people so if you take a subject and take the verb are and keep a noun like this you can use it for the situation called identity and you may get a doubt can i use it only with we no as i have told you just now you can use it with we you they and any plural noun let us say people we are soldiers you are soldiers they are soldiers people are soldiers we are employees you are employees they are employees people are employees we are workers you are workers they are workers people are workers that's it this is a small sentence for a beginner it's a very big achievement because he has learned how to make a small sentence take a subject your choice is any one of these four people then keep the verb are it is going to indicate present tense if you use it then keep a noun then make as many sentences as possible is that clear fine now how to make progress in this this is fixed whether you are a school going baby or a professor all of us are going to use the same this is fixed for all of us so your achievement is not in this your achievement is in this if you have 100 nouns you can make 100 types of sentences if you have 10 nouns you can make only 10 sentences so keep on collecting as many nouns as possible which can be used for human beings or which can be used for non living things then make sentences then you can make progress so take a subject any one of these four take a verb are collect nouns keep on making sentences this is called stage 1 once you become good at making sentences once you develop some confidence of making correct sentences then proceed to stage 2 look at these sentences we are soldiers this is called affirmative form or call it a positive form of the sentence now i should learn how to make the negative form we are not soldiers call it we are not soldiers and if you are in hurry if you do not want to use four words call it we aren't soldiers we are not soldiers we aren't soldiers positive and negative statements now if you want to use this as a question bring him here and send him here it's quite simple begin the sentence with are and keep him here soldiers are we soldiers you are using this question to confirm are we soldiers aren't we soldiers aren't we soldiers you can also say are we not soldiers that's it so after making the sentences you should learn how to make the four variations learn the variations of these sentences so that you can use it more comfortably repeat it we are soldiers we are not soldiers are we soldiers aren't we soldiers they are players they are not players are they players aren't they players you are workers you are not workers are you workers aren't you workers they are children they are not children are they children aren't they children we are scientists we aren't scientists are we scientists aren't we scientists 
So this is called oral drilling. You have to do this with your mouth. Don't do it silently. It's not going to help you in any way. So take a subject, take R, keep a noun, make a sentence. And with every sentence, you should make four variations and repeat them loudly a number of times. So make it a timetable. Take 100 nouns, make sentences with 100 nouns. Then again, make four forms with each. You will get 400 sentences. And your tongue will get a wonderful practice with this. This is the first use of R. Now let us see how it helps me in another way, the second use of R. Look at this sentence. They are brave. Subject, verb, brave. This is a word in English language and this is called adjective. This is called adjective. So this is the verb are, it indicates present tense and you can use it with we, they, you and any plural noun. And this is the adjective. This is the second use of are. They are brave. We are honest. You are sincere. Children are naughty. The books are expensive. This part of the sentence is called subject. This part of the sentence is called verb. And this part of the sentence are the words. And here we are taking the help of adjectives. When should I use this type of sentences? Just try to guess. You are handsome. You are tall. You are brave. You are bold. You are courageous. You are tall. You are dark. You are intelligent. You are decent. You are dignified. You are disciplined. You are dedicated. You are determined. Like this. What do they indicate? All these sentences indicate description. This type of sentences should be used to describe a person or a thing. Description is possible for a living and for a non-living thing. So take a subject, take R and take an adjective, make one small sentence. This is the second sentence which we are making with R. They are brave, we are honest, you are sincere, children are naughty, the books are expensive, the books are new. The books are good, the books are bad, the books are old, the books are dusty. In this way, the more you collect adjectives, the more you can make sentences. Now this is fixed. They, we, you, children or any plural noun. Everybody is going to use the same subject. This is fixed, are. And this indicates present tense. But your progress depends on the number of adjectives you collect. If you have only 50 adjectives, throughout your life, you will be making only 50 sentences. So people will come to know that your vocabulary is limited and you cannot make more number of sentences. So your job is to collect large number of adjectives so that you can make large number of sentences like this and make your language more beautiful, more attractive. This happens in stage one. Once you collect large number of adjectives and start making sentences, you will develop a lot of confidence. You will develop the courage of making sentences on your own. After that, we should go to stage two. See these sentences. They are sincere. Subject, verb and other word. This is called adjective. It is in present tense and this is the verb R. It indicates present tense and I can use it for we, they, you and any plural noun. Now, the meaning of this sentence is description. I am describing these people by using this word called sincere. 
Now I should know it. I should know how to use it in different ways. They are sincere. They are not sincere. Are they sincere? Aren't they sincere? You have to practice these four forms as loudly as possible. That is going to improve your fluency. They are sincere. They are not sincere. Are they sincere? Aren't they sincere? They are corrupt. They are not corrupt. Are they corrupt? Aren't they corrupt? They are intelligent. They are not intelligent. Are they intelligent? Aren't they intelligent? They are punctual. They are not punctual. Are they punctual? Aren't they punctual? They are brave. They are not brave. Are they brave? Aren't they brave? So collect 50 or 100 adjectives and make four forms with every sentence. You will be making 400 types of sentences. And do this loudly and orally. It will be a wonderful practice for your tongue. This is the second use of R. Children are playing. Children are crying. Children are laughing. Children are sitting. Children are standing. Children are going to school. Children are watching TV. Children are enjoying. Children, children, children. This is called subject. And the next word is are. And what is the third word I have been using all ing forms? Playing, sitting, standing, enjoying, going. That is the third use of are. Children are playing. Take any plural form. We, you, they or children or any plural noun. Are, it indicates present tense. These are ing forms. Children are playing. Children are enjoying. Children are sitting in the classroom. Children are standing at the bus stop. Children are going to library. Children are crying. Children are laughing. This is replaceable. You can also say, we are playing, we are enjoying, we are sitting, we are standing, we are going, we are crying, we are laughing. Replace it with you. You are playing, you are enjoying, you are sitting, you are standing, you are going, you are crying, you are laughing. Replace it with they. They are playing, they are enjoying, they are sitting, they are standing, they are going, they are crying, they are laughing. That's it. This is another sentence. For a beginner, this is a very, very, very big achievement. Do not get carried away by all this boring terminology, present continuous, past continuous, simple present, simple past, present perfect continuous, future perfect continuous, active voice, passive voice. It doesn't make any difference. This is a word. This is present tense. These are the people who can go with that person. And these are the words that are possible. And if you are still interested in grammar, let me tell you, this is called present continuous. I always downplay the terminology. This is called present continuous tense. Not necessary for you to remember this. So collect large number of ing forms and keep on making sentences like this. And when should I use this? You will use it when you are talking about Temporary actions. Do you think children cry every day? No, they cry only for a short period till you give them something. After that, they don't cry. So that is temporary. Children are crying. Do you think children play throughout their life, whole day, whole week? No, they play only when it is the time to play. Temporary. So use it if it is a temporary action or if the work is still going on, if it is not over, if it is an incomplete form, you use this one. We are eating, it's going on. We are eating, we are taking food, 
we are standing it's going on it hasn't ended we are sitting it's going on incomplete and if it is taking place continuously on regular basis she is learning english language they are learning english language we are learning english language you are learning english language regularly if it is going on you can use this so use it if it is a temporary action use it if it is an incomplete action use it if it is taking place on continuous regular basis so collect large number of ing forms and make more and more and more sentences once you develop the confidence of making sentences with subject r and ing form then go to second stage to practice the variations how to practice the variations let us see now see these sentences subject verb and ing form it indicates present tense grammar calls it present continuous tense now we should see how it can be used in four different ways they are playing they are not playing this is positive form and this is negative form are they playing are they not playing are they not playing you can also say in a simple way contracted form called aren't they aren't they playing let us repeat it they are playing they are not playing are they playing aren't they playing children are enjoying children are not enjoying are children enjoying aren't children enjoy workers are going workers are not going are workers going aren't workers going we are learning we are not learning are we learning aren't we learning this is positive form when the action is going on you have to use the first one this is negative form when it is not going on naturally we use the second one now these two are used to confirm i want to confirm whether it is going on are they playing yes they are playing no they are not playing i want to confirm this in a positive way and i want to confirm this in a negative way aren't you going to college regularly your attendance is very less are you not taking medicines there is no improvement in your health are you not doing the exercise because you haven't reduced your weight so i use this question when i want to confirm it in a negative way so these are the situations where we use these four variations so collect more number of ing forms make sentences and again practice every sentence in four different ways so that you will get the confidence of using it positively negatively positive and negative question forms this is the third use of r now let us see what is the fourth use of r and how it is going to help me in my english language Look at these sentences. We are at home. Children are in the playground. They are on second floor. you are in india this part of the sentence is called subject and this part of the sentence is called verb and this part of the sentence is called other words in the first category we used nouns in the second category we used adjectives in the third category we used ing forms and now we are using prepositional phrases these are called prepositions at in on in and if you add a noun to the preposition it becomes prepositional phrase 
So R goes with prepositional phrases also and this type of sentences can be used to talk about time or place or relationship. If you have more number of prepositional phrases, you can make more sentences with R and with these four people. And as I have been telling you, it is used to talk about present tense. Let us repeat these sentences once. We are at home, children are in the playground, they are on second floor, you are in India. We are against violence. We are in front of your house. We are behind your house. We are beside your house. We are opposite your house. So we are in front of your house. This is a prepositional phrase. We are behind your house. That's a prepositional phrase. We are beside your house. That's a prepositional phrase. We are opposite your house. That's a prepositional phrase. So if you have more number of prepositional phrases, you can make more number of sentences like this. This is stage one. Make sentences and read them, repeat them loudly as many times as possible. Once you gain the confidence of making sentences with prepositional phrases, then you should go to stage two to learn, practice, variations. Look at these sentences. The books are on a table. Children are at home. This is subject as I have told you just now. This is verb and this is prepositional phrase. The books are on the table. Now I should know how to use it in four different ways. The books are on the table. The books are not on the table. Are the books on the table? Aren't the books on the table? Aren't the books on the table? Or you can also call it Are the books not on the table? It doesn't make any difference. You can use contracted form or expanded form. Now repeat it loudly. The books are on the table. The books are not on the table. Are the books on the table? Aren't the books on the table? Children are at home, positive form. If children are at home, we use this sentence. If they are not at home, naturally we say children are not at home. That is the negative form. Children are at home. Children are not at home. Are children at home? I want to confirm. Yes, children are at home. No, children are not at home. Are children at home? Aren't children at home? Negative form. Repeat. Children are at home. Children are not at home. Are children at home? Aren't children at home? We are in front of you. We are not in front of you. Are we in front of you? Aren't we in front of you? The books are beside the table. The books are not beside the table. Are the books beside the table? Aren't the books beside the table? The soldiers are at the border. The soldiers are not at the border. Are the soldiers at the border? Aren't the soldiers at the border? The books are in the library. The books are not in the library. Are the books in the library? Aren't the books in the library? In this way, collect large number of prepositional phrases, make sentences and convert every sentence into four variations. Practice them loudly. I hope you have enjoyed this fourth use of R. Look at these sentences. Children are here. The books are there. The workers are downstairs. Your parents are abroad. As usual, this is called subject. 
this is called verb abroad downstairs here there upstairs everywhere nowhere all these are called other words if you are interested in grammar they are called adverbs they are allowed to go with are this is the fifth use of are children are here the books are there the workers are downstairs your parents are abroad these sentences are used when you are talking about place they are called place adverbs and after making sentences with them in stage 1 in stage 2 you should learn how to make the four forms with each as we have seen just now we have made four forms with uh, nouns adjectives ing forms and prepositional phrases here also you can make four forms children are here children are not here are children here aren't children here the books are there the books are not there are there books aren't there books the workers are downstairs the workers are not downstairs are the workers downstairs aren't the workers downstairs your parents are abroad your parents are not abroad are your parents abroad aren't your parents abroad remember when you are practicing the positive and the negative question forms you have to be very careful especially the non native speakers of english language because you are likely to use this twice for example are the workers are downstairs are the workers are downstairs so that's why be slow but be correct check once again the workers are downstairs the workers are not downstairs are the workers take a pause here are the workers downstairs aren't the workers take a pause here downstairs i repeat your parents are abroad your parents are not abroad are your parents abroad aren't your parents abroad in this way you have to practice so this is the fifth use of are now we are going to learn the sixth use of are how it is going to help me in making some more sentences look at these sentences books this is called subject this is in plural noun so i use are this is a verb in english language call it an auxiliary verb or main verb it doesn't make any difference call it a verb indicating present tense books are sold books are printed books are published books are given books are written books are sold books are borrowed books are lent books are used books are stolen you can make as many sentences as possible subject verb other words what are these called all these are called action verbs they are called action verbs and they are in past participle form every action verb has five forms take a look here speak speaks spoke spoken and speaking every action verb has five forms this is called base form this is called s form this is called past form this is called past participle form we are depending on this person now this is called ing form this is called past participle form all these are called past participle forms books are sold books are printed books are published books are given books are written books are sold books are borrowed books are lent books are used books are stolen these are the actions done by somebody else books are not doing any action here something is done to the books 
books are not at all the doers books are receivers something is happening to books something is done to the books and in english grammar now i am using the terminology this is called passive voice traditional teachers love to use this terminology in the classroom passive voice passive voice this is passive voice so no problem these are the sentences you should use when you are highlighting the receiver subject but not the doer the actions sold printed published given written sold have written twice borrowed lent used stolen done by somebody else but they are not getting the importance here they are avoidable they are removable i can keep the full stop here itself that itself indicates that they are not getting any importance here books are sold by them if you want to say you can say like this books are sold by them books are printed by them books are published by them books are given by them books are written by them books are taken by them books are borrowed by them books are lent by them books are used by them books are stolen by them this is called passive voice this is called present tense passive voice now your progress depends on the large number of past participle forms if you collect and add it to the living or non living subject then you can make more number of sentences now this is a non living thing we have used these uh, past participle forms to make sentences now let us make one sentence for a living subject look at this sentence players are welcomed players are received players are respected players are insulted players are humiliated players are trained players are sent abroad subject verb other words as i have told you just now they are called past participle forms now these are the actions done by somebody else not by these people they are not doing any action here something is happening to them something is done to them they are not the doers they are the receivers this is called present tense passive voice in english grammar if you want to mention the doer you can mention the doer here players are welcomed by them somebody else them means somebody else players are welcomed by them players are received by them players are respected by them players are insulted by them players are humiliated by them players are trained by them players are sent abroad by them in this way keep collecting large number of past participle forms which can be used for a living subject and keep on making own sentences this is another technique another way of framing sentences with r now once you develop the confidence of making sentences with past participle forms that is present tense passive voice go to stage 2 and learn the four forms of every example players are welcomed players are not welcomed are players welcomed aren't players welcomed players are received by them players are not received by them are players received by them aren't players received by them players are respected in every country players are not respected in every country are players respected in every country aren't players respected in every country players are insulted here players are not insulted here are players insulted here aren't players insulted here if you do this regularly loudly with lot of energy definitely it is going to help you this is for living thing earlier we took one example for non living thing like books are printed same that example also can be practiced in four ways books are printed books are not printed are books printed 
Aren't books printed? Books are published. Books are not published. Are books published? Aren't books published? Books are given to students. Books are not given to students. Are books given to students? Aren't books given to students? Books are given to them. Books are not given to them. Are books given to them? Aren't books given to them? This is the sixth use of are. I hope you have enjoyed this. Now let us discuss the seventh use of are. Look at these sentences. Children are being taught by me. Children are being pampered by me. Children are being encouraged by me. Children are being sent out by me. Children are being motivated by me. This part of the sentence is called subject and this part of the sentence is called verb other words. Now here in this sentence also just like the earlier one the sixth one nothing is done by children in these sentences. Children are not the doers of the action. Children are not at all doing any action here. Rather somebody else is doing the action here. Who is that somebody else? Me. I am the doer. I am doing all these actions. R. R indicates present tense. If you go to the background of these examples, I am teaching children. I am pampering children. I am encouraging children. I am sending out children. I am motivating children. But in this sentence, what is happening? The doer is not getting any importance. That's why he is at the end of the sentence. In fact, he is avoidable. I, if I am not interested in using by me, I can keep the full stop there itself. It doesn't make any difference. He is so unimportant that whether you keep him or do not keep him, it does not make any difference as far as grammatical correctness is concerned. The sentences are correct even if you keep the full stop here. You can happily say children are being taught, children are being pampered, children are being encouraged, children are being sent out, children are being motivated. This is the seventh use of sentence. How to do that? R being this is fixed, keep it fixed as it is. And I've told you already how many types of subjects are possible here. We, you, they and any plural noun like children. We are being taught, you are being taught, they are being taught, children are being taught. So keep using these four subjects. This is fixed. Keep on changing the past participle forms. These are called past participle forms. The more you have past participle forms, the more you can make sentences. And by the way, grammar calls it present continuous passive voice. The traditional, the conservative teachers who love using terminology and confusing the students more and more, they call it present continuous passive voice. It is not necessary to know and remember this terminology. Your job is to make correct sentences like this. Take a subject, take any one of these four people, keep R being here, keep past participle forms, then you can make large number of sentences like this. And when should I use this one? You should use this when you are talking for present time, present tense. And you should use this when you want to downplay, when you do not want to give importance to the doer, when you want to hide the doer, when you want to ignore the doer. If the doer is 
unimportant, if the doer is insignificant, if the doer is not worth mentioning, then use this type of sentences. This is a living subject, that's why we have taken children are being taught, children are being pampered, children are being encouraged, children are being sent out, children are being motivated. You can make sentences even for a non-living subject also. Let us see how we can make sentences for a non-living subject. Look at this example. Books are being printed. Subject, verb. Books are being printed. If you want to mention the doer, you can mention. Otherwise, you can ignore it like this. Books are being printed. Books are being published. Books are being donated. Books are being given. Books are being covered. Books are being checked. Books are being issued. Like this it can go on and on and on. What is the meaning of these sentences? In these sentences, books are not the doers. Books are not doing any action. Action, printed, published, donated, given, covered, checked, issued, done by somebody else. Let us say, by me. I am the doer here, not the books. And grammar calls it present continuous passive voice. Books are being printed by me. Books are being published by me. Books are being donated by me. Books are being given by me. Books are being covered by me. Books are being checked by me. Books are being issued by me. After making large number of sentences like this, try to make four forms with every sentence. Books are being printed by me. Books are not being printed by me. Are books being printed by me? Aren't books being printed by me? Books are being published by me. Positive statement. Books are not being published by me. Negative statement. Are books being published by me? Positive question. Aren't books being published by me? Negative question. Books are being donated. Books are not being donated. Are books being donated? Aren't books being donated? In this way, you should practice the variations. In the earlier category also, we have seen children. Children are being taught by me. Children are not being taught by me. Are children being taught by me? Aren't children being taught by me? In this way, you can make four forms for living and non-living subject. Now, when should I use it? You should use it when you are talking about temporary action or incomplete action or continuous action. Just like present continuous, same thing. There it was in active format and here it is in passive format. Temporary, incomplete and continuous actions. You can use for any one, any two or all these three situations. This is the seventh use of are. It helps me in making sentences like this. Now let us discuss the eighth and the last use of are. Look at these sentences. We are to receive the Prime Minister, you are to get the promotion, they are to play in the final match. This is called subject and this is called verb. To receive the Prime Minister, to get the promotion, to play in the final match, this is other word. This part of the sentence comes under the category other words. 
Now in grammar this is called to infinitive. To infinitive in a simple way you can also call it to plus base form of the verb. So R helps you in making sentences even with two infinitives like this. We are to win, we are to lose, we are to come, we are to go, we are to sit, we are to stand, we are to read, we are to write, we are to play, we are to enjoy. In this way you can make large number of sentences. Now these sentences indicate present tense. These are the actions which have been fixed already and they are going to take place soon. We are to receive the Prime Minister. The meaning of this sentence is, you are ready to receive the Prime Minister at any time the Prime Minister may arrive and it is your duty, it is your responsibility to do this action. So we are the members of this club, we are the hosts, we are the organizers of this club, so we are to receive the Prime Minister. In that way you can make the sentence. Take the case of the next one. You are to get the promotion. You have been the best employees in our company. You are the senior most employees. You are sincere. You are honest. And you are to get the promotion. Meaning you are going to get promotion. It has been fixed. It has been decided. It is going to happen soon. They are to play in the final match. It has been fixed already. It is going to take place soon. So this type of sentences are used when something is compulsory, when something is obligatory, when something has been fixed already, when something is going to take place very soon, we use this type of sentences. You are to come to the library, you are to sit quietly in the library, you are to get the certificate tomorrow, you are to appear for the examination once again. Like this you can make sentences. So in this video friends, we have seen the uses of R. R is a verb in English language. It indicates present tense. It can go with we, you, they and any plural noun, living or non-living noun like books or children. Then you can make eight types of sentences. We have seen what those eight sentences are and how each sentence can be used in four different ways when to use those sentences and how to use those sentences. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. This is Jay Balakrishna signing off.